I'm Jesse. Our series is in the book of Ruth, and our devotions are taking a close look at the law that serves as the foundation to the events of the book of Ruth. If you grasp the legal system that was at play, then you fully appreciate the redemption that takes place in the book of Ruth. We've seen God prescribe how it is that widows are to be cared for. Uh, you also see tied into this uh, a system for foreclosure in which you have a man of Israel with a plot of the promised land that belongs to him. He passes away when there's no redeemer, there's no blood relative who's willing and able to pay the full price to redeem the property and rescue the, the distressed bride, then the title deed to his property is flipped over and on the back is written this stipulation that a blood relative who is willing and able, a goel, a kinsman redeemer, guardian redeemer, family redeemer, depending on your Bible translation, a nearest kinsman, if you use the King James, it has seven years to come and pay the full price to redeem this property. And then it was folded over and where paper met paper, hot wax was dripped upon the merging and it was sealed with a signet ring so as not to be forged. And these were seven seals, one seal for each of the years uh, that could go by until this property would essentially be foreclosed and then could become sort of subsumed within the, the larger uh, property that surrounded it. And sadly, that means that the name of the deceased would be lost and erased from his allocation of the promised land. Here's, uh, th th this was, this was a, a, a serious role to play. To act as the redeemer carried huge responsibilities and only certain people could do it. You had to be of the proper bloodline. You had to be closely related. Like we saw yesterday in De De Deuteronomy 25.5, when brothers live on the same property and one of them dies without a son, the wife of the dead man will not marry a stranger outside of the family. Her brother-in-law is to take her as his wife. So these are, th th it begins with how closely related, it begins with the brother. And then from there through uh, uh, incrementally, uh, incrementally, you know, increasing distances away in terms of, of blood relation, it, uh, uh, the onus would pass to the next, uh, the next eligible redeemer. God gives this prescription after having made the proclamation and reminded them multiple times in the previous chapter, remember that you were a slave in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore, I'm commanding you to do this. That's Deuteronomy 24, 18. God's like, I was your redeemer. Now you redeem the bride when she's in distress. She married this guy and then he kicked the bucket on her. What is she to do? I'm commanding you to see to it that she is looked after and she's well provided for. She, she has the right then as per God to expect this in the Old Testament context of Israel. And if she is denied this, then it's because there's a man who is refusing to follow through on what God said to do, okay? That, that is, he's refusing to do the, the, the duty of a brother-in-law. That's verse five, the expectation of a brother. It's expected that you would do this because you're the brother-in-law. You're gonna have a child and he's gonna bear the name of your deceased relative. So the, the expectation for the redeemer was high. You're foregoing your right to name your firstborn son after yourself, for one thing. Like he's going to bear the name of your deceased brother. It's almost as though he's not your son. He's really the son of your deceased brother. And the allocation of the land, I means you're foregoing your right then to marry. God did not condone polygamy. It means that you're also foregoing your right to choose your own wife, that you're going to marry your brother's, your late brother's wife, and you're going to name your children after him. So it's a high bar. It's costly. It's expensive. In some, uh, in some leveret marriage cases, it was expected that you would come and you would actually even buy the property from the widow. Even if you were already married, there, is not, there are other examples of leveret marriage precedent in which you would buy buy the property from the widow and she'd live off the proceeds the rest of her life. That doesn't mean that you can Airbnb it out because she lives there, man. So there's a high expectation. It costs the redeemer a lot. He foregoes what he might be right, uh, right to expect on his own. And he can face recourse if the bride, if he, if he wrongs the bride, she has the ability to remove his sandal and spit in his face. And then you have a new name, bro. And it's not going to fit on it's not going to fit on your intramural jersey very well. It's the house of the man whose sandal was removed. That's going to be your, that, that blemish is going to be on your reputation forevermore. So there's a high expectation. 
to be a redeemer, to act as a redeemer, was a noble thing. It was a costly thing. It was a self-sacrificial thing. That's what Boaz did, and that's what Jesus does. He is of the proper lineage. As we'll see in the book of Ruth, he does pay the full price upon the cross, and he is willing, he is able. In the book of Revelation, spoiler, he stands there as our redeemer. God redeemed ancient Israel, Boaz redeemed Ruth, Jesus redeems 